Hello, this is Brian Rowe with the Mythic MTG Tech number 236 doing a match that I recently commentated on between Martin Goldkirst and Sean Cantonese playing two of the weirder decks in Legacy out there. These are decks that you don't often see, but they really show how diverse the particular format is. We've got an Aluren deck here, which is actually kind of a mid-range build, so it's got a great kind of fair matchup and a combo out win against a Netherlands deck, which is a lands combo deck that also has Nether Void to shut down other combo decks and a bunch of cannot be countered spells and a living wish board. It really shows how diverse the legacy format is. Uh, enjoy the match. If you've got any comments or particular matchups that you would like to see, definitely let me know. Um, I'm commenting or in commentary there about uh, once a month or so. Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday night at uh, Card Kingdom. We have some legacy action for you tonight. I'm Mike Kiesel here with Brian Rowe. And uh, we got a very interesting match to start us off. We have uh, uh, Sean Cadenese, who ten we've had him on stream before, playing, uh, I'm guessing, uh, uh, Nethervoid Lands, as well as Martin Holden Chris, who is one of our learning specialists here in Seattle. Um, yeah, these are definitely two interesting decks that have some cards that you just normally don't see. Some yeah. great stuff. Uh, I will endlessly put Nether Void on stream whenever that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's, that's a wonderful card. I've definitely yes. played it a bit in Cube and it is a powerhouse. We have some very interesting cards from what I've seen in that list. It's packing Abrupt Decays. Mm -hmm. It has a ton of uncountable cards, basically, mm -hmm. to get around Nether Void. You got Abrupt Decays. I uh, know he has at least a thrown the last troll in his living wish board. <laughs> I That's a nice win condition. Yeah, I saw him wish with for the Miracles matchup a little bit. Yeah, I like, saw him wish for that yesterday. So they really have to pull Terminus, or that's their only answer there. Yeah. Yeah. So and yes, it, it does seem that Sean is on his Netherlands deck. Excellent. And my favorite deck name, I must say. <laughs> and then Martin's on uh, Aluren. Oh. Do you have any thoughts on this matchup? <laughs> oh. So with a Lurin in play, you're still going to have to pay three uh, to go cast off. Um, I don't know. Let, the Lurin deck actually plays a decent amount of basics, um, which help yeah. significantly in dealing with a land stack. Um, Abrupt Decay doesn't hit a Lurin. I mean, I, I think I like a Lurin here. Uh, between the two, although, I mean, Aluren is prepared to deal with uh, fair decks, with things like Baleful Strix currently, and those are kind of dead cards in this matchup entirely. I, the other thing, too, is Aluren has, tends to have a lot of discard, like mm -hmm. Cabal Therapy and Thoughtseize, mm -hmm. so um, we might not even see another boy hit play. <laughs> uh, it's true. It, it is a, the battle of the four mana enchantments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. It looks like we're getting into the mulligans at this point. Yeah. Um, Martin definitely at least has some basics there. Yep. And See, the island, I think, of uh, Misty Rainforest on yep. this side. Oh, we've got another void. Yep, there's another void, and I think a... Uh, Oh, oh, he's shuffling though. back. Yeah. Okay. All I saw was like uh, Death of Void and uh, Life and Bloom. So, so does he add any uh, like diamond speed mana to get it out there faster? Or? Yeah, I think his list is sort of like a combo lens list. I've seen mm. uh, Mox Diamonds, your Explorations. Mm -hmm. I don't think any Mana Bonds. Okay. So it's yeah. So it's kind of like a little bit more control a version of the lands, heavily on the on that black for Abrupt Decay and mm -hmm. Death Void. Ch Chains of Anastopolis might not actually be bad in that list. Yeah. Well, another card that doesn't see much play. Yeah. So Sean's taking a mulligan with Martin Cap. So yeah. So probably also running Crucible of Worlds um, in there. Probably. Seems like it would go really well with the Nether Void Wasteland idea. Yeah. Just lock them out. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his his actual lands package is. I'm assuming it's your typical some uh, number of stage dark uh, some number of um, like maze events and stuff like that. Well, he's uh, got a playable six here. Yeah, I saw a uh, crop rotation. Oh, oh, some number of lands. Oh yeah, so he's yep. keeping, so he's scrying. Yep. Uh, crop rotation is such a good card. 
Sean is going to put us to the test, though. Most of his cards are, as you would imagine, Judge Foils. So <laughs> 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 this will be a little bit uh, interesting to yeah. decipher with the light. Uh, yeah. First turn thoughts use is exactly what you want. Let's see what Sean's playing with. So. Okay. Okay. So I, th I think you got to take the Nether Void here. Um, <laughs> Abrupt Decay doesn't actually stop the combo, and he's got a pair of crop rotates here. Um, oh well, you could take the. Crop I guess rotate. he doesn't have the. He doesn't have the combo, so it, this stops him from double crop rotating into the win. Yeah. Um, so may, crop rotate is actually a decent stop here, especially if you're not going to be able to outrace uh, the Dark Depths combo. I know, he went for the Nether Void, which is very reasonable. I think both are, like, the d I'm sure he has the double combo and crop rotate, but he still needs to find two more lands. Right, uh, he's got to get the mana to power it. Yeah, and it's still going to be several turns yeah. away from him. And he drew another it looks like he drew a land. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Rue, really quick. If you can't use the big tower in there, that is the same amount of time. Oh, I, I, I Sean might actually just be firing off this to get the combo in. Yep. Yeah. Very good idea there. Yeah, just, I mean, just get it. Nothing he can do about it here, and then all he has to do is top deck lands before Aluren assembles their combo to win. Yeah. So, yeah, very solid play here. And he drew a land, so he's only two right. turns away. Yep, which means the thoughts use blanks at this point. Yeah. Yep. So that's mm -hmm. the stage. Dark depths. Yep. Yeah. So maybe taking reputation turn one might have been might have been better. Might have been better there. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any possible way he could have gotten uh, that that nether void down in play. Yeah. Right. You would. Uh, Especially if he had the thought seize already with the idea that he could get back to the nether void on the next turn. Yeah, but Martin is also threatening the combo oh, here yeah, too, he is. if okay. he has it. Well, uh, he's got at least two lands in hand and the, and the ability to shuffle cards very quickly. Yeah. Um, or he, uh, I saw two lands, I saw Cabal Therapy. Okay. Um, yeah, it yeah. doesn't look, I've not seen an Allure in there. No. So I'm it looks like he's short on the Allure. Yeah, yeah um, he has and a gold card, I think, in the back there. Mm -hmm. I think I can't tell what it is. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't learning, he would have played it by now. Yeah, yeah. Um, although uh, maybe, yeah. maybe not. If he doesn't have the combo, if he doesn't have right, if he doesn't have a recruiter, yeah. Like right now, he looks like Sharpless. Yeah. Though, so, to be honest, uh, most people in the area who's played against Martin kind of <laughs> know, know what, what he's about. playing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is not looking good. Okay. And, oh, okay. Drew the land. Another land. There you go. Pass. Not a bad one at all. Yeah. And I guess he's probably playing a lot of land, so there probably yes. is a high, high, <laughs> hit high chance that he'll get the land, yep. and we've got the scoop there. Yep. So, so Sean takes game one mm -hmm. with yeah. Merrill Lage. Yes. Yeah, you got to show off for Merrill Lage. <laughs> That is the best token. Yes. Uh, I, I wish they had more foil tokens. Uh, I really liked the ones that came out of the Hell Vault, uh, the double-sided Demon Angel tokens. Yeah. There's definitely an opportunity to, to print some more creative foil tokens. Wouldn't mind seeing an Angel, or um, even better would be uh, Elemental tokens to go with Young Pyro. Those really need to be on fire. Yeah. Oh, that would be sweet. I'm not a big fan of foils, but I can definitely see them making that. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I tend to like foils a little more in modern, where you can foil the whole deck. It feels a little weird to have everything but your lands foiled, um, and probably illegal also, yeah. um, in Legacy. Yeah. And I'm not going to play Shocks just to get foil lands. Yeah. I mean, maybe Death Shadow deck? Sure, yeah. But the, even those tend to play at least oh, one or two of the normal just in case you've got story. a match up and yeah. your life is already low. Yeah. Yeah. So what has Martin got that he can bring in here? I don't know, you really need some bounce effect to interact with this. Um, or stifle, which a learning clearly does yeah. not play. Um, so so I think Martin has at least cross and grip, which could be good. Uh, it slows down like the expiration right. effect. Um, 
I think he might run his Force of Wills in the board, so he, maybe he's bringing in Force of Wills just to have some interaction. I don't know, in, in those colors, the, the card that I really like that doesn't see much sideboard play um, is Wipe Away, uh, yeah. because it's split second. It saw some play while Omnitel was very popular, because uh, it's a very good way to put the omniscience back in their hand. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what Martin actually has sideboard. Um, to deal with the combo. If he's got land destruction yeah. or wasteland sideboard at all, then he could surgically extract. Uh, yeah, I assume there has to be some sort of graveyard hate. Um, either it be surgical extraction, maybe something like Playland in the Void. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can see more, more for mana enchantments. Sean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know he plays with the Living Wish board, so I'm not sure if he's going to bring in too much. Bring in much at all. I'm guessing there might be, so he has the black and white, so I'm guessing there's like a Gattuck T, which would be good, um, which would be very good, to, pre to prevent the Alluren from coming down. Yep. Although at that point, in, unless you have two Gattucks, you definitely just want to leave the one in the board and wish for it. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I was very happy with Gattuck during the dig through time, uh, time, and I think it's still very solid to help you with counter spells, Jaces. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely an underplay card. Really good in the Miracles matchup. Yes. I think I think the that four color aggro loom list that do, does really well in Europe but doesn't see much play here. Mm -hmm. I think that's really um, underrepresented, and I think that's a really good deck. Mm -hmm. uh, Chalice on one with a Gaddock Teague is mm -hmm. really hard for Miracles. The, the one challenge with Gaddock is getting out, uh, getting in on a cavern is pretty tough because most of the decks that you have cavern in, it doesn't share creature types. With. Right. It'd be much better if it was a human. Human. Not that many kids kids or advisors. No. <laughs> Nothing. I can't. I'm not sure I can think of another tournament playable legacy kit kit. I'm sure there's one out there that somebody in the stream knows what it is, but yeah. I cannot think of it. Yeah. Um there's that like pro red one. The third one the the gain of life every no, it's like sack to prevent. Oh, sack for pro red. Yeah. Or prevent. It, it has pro red, and it's sacks to prevent. Oh uh, yeah. It's like one white. That one's almost modern playable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a kitkin, right? I, I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure. Figure of Destiny is a kitkin. That's saw play at some point in time. They were a standard powerhouse, the kitkin, with little to no legacy. All right, we're gonna start off with a. Oh, some, that's right. Not a bad start. Yeah. Would rather have a thought seize in this case, but death rates very solid, threatening and early yeah. combo here. I guess the main question is uh, basic or non-basic. I, I think you. Okay, that's an interesting choice there. I, I would have erred on the side of basic, even though we didn't see wastelands. Just looking at land decks and seeing Nether Void, Nether yeah. Void makes me want to think that there could be some land destruction. Oh, we're off to a very fast start here. So we've got the diamonds to accelerate. Getting into the Nether Void. Yep. And yeah, both start off with some acceleration. But yeah. Yeah. Gonna just pour it down mm -hmm. and brainstorm response. Perfect. Yeah. Using all the mana there. Yep. I know. The advantage of doing this during a big hero is only gonna be able to put one of those cards back. Yeah. I think I saw him put. I think there was at least a Dream Stalker. Mm in the pile he's considering putting back and I don't know he doesn't doesn't need that early on. So yeah, that's definitely a drum stop getting that's getting shuffled away. And just a land, yeah. Okay, yeah. Upkeep draw we're we're in the main phase. He's just passing. He's got a lot of land. Yeah. So he has two more land in hands. And a Dream Stalker on top. And it looks like he's got a Brainstorm, which will help significantly to fix those lands. Yep. So I think you fetch before the draw to get rid of the one land and see three cards. Well, no, the top of his library right now is Dream Stalker. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I guess oh, he's got Chalice over there from the Netherlands deck. Oh, wow. That is looks like he's going to put it out on one. Yep. Uh, that forces the Brainstorm right away. Uh, yeah, we're gonna... I think he's gotta fetch and look for a force here, depending on how dependent he is. Well, the combo doesn't actually have one casters in it. No. So Chalice on one just blinks the rest of his brainstorms and ponders. 
and I'm not even sure if he's running Ponders. He, um, I believe he's on more of the the shardless agent kind of yeah. cascade into value. That makes sense. Uh, deck, so he, he might just be on the the one drops being brainstorms and discard. Mm -hmm. So he's already got a deathright shaman out to accelerate him, and this would be the second brainstorm in the graveyard. So it's really only blanking a few cards. Yeah. Unless there's like surgicals, I guess the right. D2 yeah. out of court. Okay, so he, there's some baleful strix there. Swan Song. Baleful Strix is such a good card, but it doesn't help with the combo here. Um, definitely better against Emrakul. That's a very awkward... I saw a, sw <laughs> I saw a Swan Song in his hand. That's a very awkward counter instant sorcerer's and enchantments. Not this... Yes, not, not this, this or not this artifact. <laughs> <laughs> and then not anything else. Uh, so depending on how many of those you brought in, those are definitely going to be dead at this point. Yeah. So that's the first card you put back, so you'll get a chance to shuffle it away, at least. Just exiling the land to reduce the land. Yep. Making those Make sure he doesn't light from the loan and yeah. get some value out of it. I think knowing that the Swan Song is next, obviously fetching. Yeah. But fortunately, Sean doesn't look anywhere near the combo yet at this point, so he's got a little bit of time to fix his hand. Martin does. So I think he led on that, um, I think he's been on the sun base point because he's so land heavy mm -hmm. that uh, he was fine just getting wasteland at turn one. And the one nice thing about Baleful is that it does at least block. It saves you a turn yeah. from the 2020. It does block him early. Yes. And it's a cavern harpy in hand now too, I think. Okay. Huh. So how close to the combo is he at this point? He still needs a Lauren. He's got the cavern harpy. You can't tell what the rest of his hand is. Yeah. 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 So he's just gonna try to start this for value. Yeah. He's just gonna value. Um, the, the one benefit he has of playing against uh, lands is. His life total is dropping in 20s, so right. <laughs> he can utilize the life, uh, paying life, you pay one life, I think, from Cavern Harpy to bounce it. Mm -hmm. So he, he, each life he pays from Cavern Harpy is another card. So next turn he's basically going to get two free cards, and each, each, every other turn after that an additional. So this is a, better, a slower but better draw engine than Brainstorms. And Karen Arby is a 2-1, so it is a lock. Um, I, I guess additionally, the Belfast Strix is a flyer, so you can just have the Strix sit there, block, and then bounce it to his hand. Well, oh, the Karen Harpy, you mean? Or, um, the, no, if he's got the Strix out and he's being attacked with a 20, 20 yeah. um then he can just bounce the Baleful Strix after it blocks to his hand. If he has... Only if he has a learn play. Uh, Cavern Harpy only bounces itself. Oh. It, it, it has the gate ability, so when it enters the battlefield, it he finds a way to bounce the Harpy. Okay. But but the Harpy is fine. So right. you can do the same trick with just with the Harpy. Ah, okay. So the Harpy can block and bounce okay. itself. So he's slowed down a little bit here by the choke. Although the fact that he's got a death right in play, um, I, I think means that it's really not that much of an issue. He is playing basics in here. Um, we haven't seen the basic forest yet, and once again, the fact that um, his life doesn't matter means that he gets to draw three cards every turn with the Sylvan Library. Yeah. It's starting to look better than an Ancestral Recall. So it looks like Sean really needs an Abrupt Decay here to take out that Sylvan Library. Uh, it looks like he's got a Crop Rotate to get partway to the combo here. Well, he... Oh, he has a Netherboard in here. So he ah, can... okay. I didn't see the Netherboard. He can slow this... Yep, and there we go. That's Netherboard choke. Yeah. That, that changes things. And my... my uh, if Martin had Cosin Grip... Um, Cosin Grip, you're still going to have to pay the three on that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah it doesn't gonna, get around it. You're going to have to pay the full, full six mm -hmm. to Cosin Grip. Right. Which is not impossible for him to get to at this point. No, it's uh, 
And Sean is halfway to the combo right now. He's got a no, crop rotate in hand. Oh yeah, he has a crop rotate. Yeah, right. And he can easily pay no, he four can't, mana. He can't crop rotate because there's chalice on one. Oh yeah. That's that's not a trigger you can miss for yourself. No. You may unfortunately miss it for your opponent. Okay, so the so the crop rotate's dead in hand. So yeah, we've got a long we've still got a long grueling game at this point. But he does have the choke for shot and port combo. So any islands that come down are dead. Yes. But as long as Martin keeps playing out these fetches, mm -hmm. and I think he has a good number of basics in his deck. Um, like, he might even have two forests in his well, and, and if Sean is playing um, Wastelands, he can always um, try porting the fetches at end of turn. Um, oh, yeah. And then try to waste them that way. Yeah. In fact, just to, just to for force him to crack them, I might even give that a try. Because every time he gets to reshuffle off of the Sylvan, um, it increases his card quality. I believe that was a. I think that's the judge from a living wish. Ah. It has a bird of paradise on it, right? <laughs> yes. So, what would you really want from any card in the game at this point? Oh, he's just. Oh, it's just oh, abrupt Just abrupt decay. Yeah. Excellent. No, that is. Yep. That's the best thing you can do right now. See. And that, that interaction that you pointed out with the Nether Void is really nice, that you don't have to pay the three because it can't be countered yeah. by spells or abilities. Um, I wonder what the life total is. Because Martin has been draining a few times and hit, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, he's at 12. Okay. So... Well, it's still a pretty slow clock with the Cavern Harpy. Well, it's Cavern Harpy plus uh, Death Wish. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I'm pretty sure we saw a forest earlier. Um, so he's at least going to be able to get three lands out underneath the choke. Yeah. Now, whether he's only, if he's only running three basics, mm -hmm. though, that still makes it really tough to get a Lurin down with Nether Void in play. I think he might be running two forests. But not one. He drew Baleful Shakespeare for the turn. It's not really what you want to see. No. Five casting cost draw one is a little slow. Although, okay. reading Cavern Harpy. He could attack. I mean, that brings the clock to five turns instead of ten. And the island's pretty dead in the hand, well, as it is. The Cavern Harpy's a two one. Ah, okay. So the Cavern Harpy's a two one, and the Death Right has. There's at least two brainstorms in Martin's bin to eat. Okay. So. He, so he's actually got a pretty good clock here. Yeah, so Sean's like actually on the Yeah. Spider. Okay. Okay. That is also not kind of <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a wonderful underplayed card. Yeah, I am seeing a pattern here. Yes. Nath Void and Uncountable Things. I kind of want to see this deck play against uh, Miracles. Or Death Blade. Could be brutal. But yeah, this might be a... a, a so we're looking at threatening him to kill next turn, because the drain takes him down to four, untap, attack with the harpy, and drain again. Um, does he have the, are the instants and sorceries in the graveyard to support that, or are we one short? Uh, we're one short, oh, but he, 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 ha he has a like, uh, ball therapy in hand that he can just throw into the chalice. Right. <laughs> Another void is, it's countered unless you pay the three. Yeah. So you can throw it into both at that point. Oh, yeah, that's double counter. Yeah. Cho choose which one. Let's see. Is there anything in the wish board that you think creature or land that could... I mean, at this point, pretty much any flyer helps, but it just slows it down a turn. He really needs a way to deal with the Deathrite Shaman. Um, the creature that I think is best there is Phyrexian Revoker. Um, just so you can name Deathrite Shaman and shut him down. Although that still only saves you one turn, because you can activate it in response, yeah. and then you've still got to find a flyer. And I think it would have to be a land, because Living Wish costs five at this point. Right. Um, 
tabernacle doesn't do it, which it would be a good idea to have a second tabernacle in the sideboard. Maze of Ith would slow it down. Oh, Dramoka. Dramoka can't be countered. Right. Uh, Dramoka doesn't actually save him here because he's going to die during the next turn. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he needed to wasteland the uh, bayou, but I, don't, I still don't think that helps. Because he's just going to throw that there. Right, it, it doesn't help because he could just oh, fetch for a... Uh, um, yep, yeah. Oh, very interesting grindy game there. Yeah. So with, without the Nether Void in, in play, Sean may have had many more answers that he could go get. The Nether Void really hurt him on the wish. Yeah. Um, Not knowing what his wish board is. Interesting. I was trying to think of something with lightning that can matter. I didn't even think of driving mode to motor. Mm. That also can't be countered, right? Right. Cannot be countered. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, so there's your uh, uncounterable lifelink um, giant creature. I guess the one thing with this is uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of ways to really get... Like, I wonder how many life from the lungs he's actually running. If he's running the full suite to uh, to have that plan, or if he's just kind of also largely on this. I mean, with with the Mox Diamonds and Heavy Green here, it makes sense. This yeah. Even with Crop Rotate, you're putting a lot of lands in your graveyard quickly. Um, you're also, he's also running Wastelands, so... Right. It, it just, the, the Lone strategy kind of counteracts the the I have these abrupt decays and Met the roids that I actually want to draw and play. Mm -hmm. Like the the red green com combo lands, it sure it has those spells that like gamble that you wish you could draw at some point. Right, right. But it's all about getting the life from the loam and then getting that active. Yes. Um, and, and the other spells it plays are just ways to speed up. Oh, the, there's my hand right. The um, oh, no. <laughs> basically the combo it, combo eight. it's a Either speed up your land production or right. get your combo or find a life in the wrong kind of. Yeah. No, there, there's definitely less synergy in this list. Uh, I, I understand why the nether voids were really good against the omniscient stacks. Uh, they just shut it down instantaneously. Um, well, the other thing, too, is I think that uh, the Netherlands build should have a better matchup against uh, Miracle. Yeah, I think one of the problems with the land deck is that its miracle matchup is not that good. Right. Uh -huh. Between four terminus, four swords to plowshares, and a lot of board control. Rest in peace and counterbalance. Yeah. Like your yeah. only ways to win are uh, really punishing fire and dark depths. Mm -hmm. So they have enough removal for dark depths. Right, and you you've got to be playing several potion grid just yeah. to make sure that you can even get that work out. Whereas this, it has a corrupt decay's main. Mm -hmm. That's right, does a lot of disruption. Mm -hmm. Things like run. Maybe you know they could be terminus, but still. I mean, Chance deck al almost looks like one of those EDH decks that's put together not to make friends. Yeah. To make enemies <laughs> of the whole table. <laughs> I don't think you show up with Nether Void and plan to making it <laughs> <laughs> anywhere. <ever. laughs> it's one of those cards like Stasis yeah. that is, uh, really limits your social opportunities. Okay, so we've got some brainstorms there and a Baleful Strikes for Martin. Um, looks like he's keeping. Um, and we've got lots of lands. Lands in the Chalice of the Void I saw. Uh -huh. I can't tell if any of those are actually combo piece lands. Yeah, I can't really tell either. But hand might be a little slow. Uh, looks like Mark, or it looks like Sean is seriously considering him. Yeah, I think that hand was mostly just mana. Yep. So, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. That's, uh, uh, one thing about lands is, um, I played it a few times, you really need a hand that tells a story. Like, I'm gonna gamble for life from the room or go for a quick combo or right. something like that because a lot of times it will get hands of just a lot of lands you know you know a fetch land a forest a maze of it and no, and something and a if it's a hand is not going to work against a combo deck like this right 
the, the fact that he can win on turn four means you've got to have some answers. That's, what I, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, or, uh, it looks like we might be double mulligan. Oh, okay. Okay. I definitely couldn't see all of Martin's hand. So if I remember correctly, the scry, you both scry together once you've finally decided? No, the player's going first scries first, then the okay. other player scries, but it's after both people decide. Have, have picked a final answer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I think Sean it's ran like through one too many. Yeah. Okay. Now we're, we're, at, can, we're at casual rel here. Um, so we're going to get one shuffled back in. Yeah. And he hasn't seen the hand yet. It would be much more disastrous if he had seen the hand, because that would give Martin the choice of which card yeah. to he shuffle might, back He in. might have looked at the first card. Uh, I don't, he looked at one extra. Oh, yeah. He, he put seven in his hand for the mulligan. Uh, okay. So at regular RIL, the picks is if the opponent just picks ones at random and you continue your mulligans as normal. If this were competitive RIL, the opponent would have picked two at random, and then you continue mulligans from there. <laughs> so that hand has uh, stage, fetch, I think another... Um, Chalice of the Void, and, uh, oh, Gorn being nice and r reminding about a scry. <laughs> Very friendly. Uh, probably because he wants to scry, too. Yes. <laughs> now, I, I, I think you keep this, which it looks like you clearly did. Yeah. Um, you're halfway to the combo. You've got the Chalice, which slows your opponent down significantly. Um, I think that's a choke in hand as well. Oh, that's a diamond. Oh, even better. First turn Chalice. I mean, this, this is really why Chalice has been restricted in Vintage, the ability to shut your opponent out of their key spells on turn one. It's tougher to do in Legacy, because you've got to get to two mana on turn one. But in Vintage, you just have to get to zero mana on turn one. And yeah. Your opponent doesn't get boxes after you dropped all of yours. Of course. Yeah. I don't see anything that one-sided about that. <laughs> now, I'm curious what Legacy deck plays the most restricted cards in Vintage in it. Huh. It might actually be like Legacy Blood. Or no, no, it would have to be something with Brainstorm Ponder. Brainstorm Ponder are definitely... Ooh, that's a nice turn too also. Um, if he's got a port to back this up, it's going to get really ugly. Even without a port, this is ugly. But yeah. a port to back this up, and it's going to be a grueling, painful game and <laughs> until we see a 2020. Okay, no port. Just a pass back. Oh, Rocky King, very helpful there. On the Chalice on one. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, so Legacy Mud would have Trinus Spheres and Chalice of the Voice. Right. Uh, and then basically any blue deck would have Brainstorm and Ponders. Mm -hmm. um, what, other, what other cards are restricted in Vintage but actually unbanned in Legacy Mud? Is Grim Trader restricted? Probably not in Vintage. It is. I, I don't know. Imperial Seal clearly is, and Vampiric Tutor is. But Grim might be something you could have a point. I, I know I Grim wasn't at one point. I don't know if that's currently... Because there was the Grim Long deck for a while. So Lion's Eye Diamond would put us up to... A three. Storm. Storm 3. Storm 3. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lotus Petal is restricted too. Okay, so, yeah. so, so 4 and Storm. 4 and Storm. Yeah. So I guess Storm is probably... Really Now, in, in Legacy, one of my favorite things is, is to definitely play as many cards that have been banned in Modern as possible. Okay, so Martin has a solid board state here, still having a little trouble seeing his hand. He's got a Cobble Therapy there, uh, but Sean doesn't have much left in hand. I think he's just going to go for it and see if there's anything there. I think he just, now, what like, do you name here? Maybe it's just, like, Nether Void. Mm. Right, because that's, that's one of the few things he couldn't have cast yet. Oh, oh, diamond. Okay, interesting. Huh. Oh, he uh, thought he had a thought seed, so he, he, knew, that, he yeah. knew what one of the two cards we, was. We were too busy talking and about with, and with the cards. cobble therapy, <laughs> if it really was another void, he could sack the death rate worst case to get. Yeah. I think we were too busy talking about restricted cards to see the thoughts. Okay, so it's by vintage. So it's baleful strix and uh, and uh, imperial recruiter. He was able to cast the Imperial Recruiter next turn off of eating one of the lands, move towards the combo, and actually put a clock on the table. And there's an 
Exploration? We knew about the Explorer. Or Exploration. Ah, uh, Wasteland. Yeah, so you gotta hit the untapped one. Yeah. Abrupt Decay on Choke. Okay. Four, right? So we're down to just the Imperial uh, in hand. There's not nothing there. We have more up. Yeah, I think you actually play it out at this point so that you've got a clock and work towards the combo. Sure. Uh, it's a very slow clock. No, you can get another death right here just to up your mind a bit. Maybe? Or you could just grab another recruiter and continue to increase your damage. Yeah, so it's either grab another recruiter to hold up, hold up for the combo. Um, or actually, uh, Dreamstalker is the same thing as grabbing another recruiter. Oh, Dreamstalker is much better. Cause then yeah. Then you're able to just bounce your recruiter, no problem. Yes. Yeah. Good call. I think list alone list generally play two dream stalkers, so one can be safe in the deck, and then you can just use the other one for value. So now what Trump's really looking for at this point um, is that dark depths or crop rotate. Crop rotate. It's slower because he doesn't have the land to really support it. Um, he wouldn't have enough mana to activate the yeah stage. But he's he's probably got two turns at least. Martin's gonna need some good top decks. Well, I think he's just monster. at like uh, 17 here. I believe Martin has drained him once, <laughs> and he fetched once, so. There's still a lot of life. A lot of time left. Yep, and just beating him with one ones and one twos. <laughs> right. it's, it's not a bad clock. Three damage per turn plus the... Oh, no, he didn't drain. He was he was at 19. He okay. just tapped. It, it feels so good when your opponent has to pick up your cards to read them. And, I guess and he's now he's recasting the recruiter. I guess he's fetching for... I guess it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to get a tiger. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. right. Just gonna get the death right. Get the basics now that your opponent has shown Wasteland and it probably has low. Okay, so he's slowly acquiring the combo. Right. Uh, he still needs to top deck on a lure into here. Yep. Looks like we're seeing a, maybe a living wish here? Or a life from the moon? Nope, nether boy. Oh, chalice on, oh, chalice two? on two. Okay, that, sh okay. that shuts the combo down. Um, in the current state, yes it does. So if you had a, so if you're starting up with a recruiter, you can recruiter, no, you need to get the beer stalker. Right. Because he probably has reclamation stage, ah. too. That's something you can yeah. recruit her for to deal yeah. with. Abrupt Decay is doing really nice work here. Yeah, or you can just have Abrupt Decay. That works. That's a nice two-caster against Chalice. So we're still a ways away from the combo here, and Sean has enough land to create that 2020 if it comes up. So this game, although it's looking good for Martin, is a long way from over. Yeah, and now he plays Kevin Arpey, bounce the Dream Stalker to bounce the Recruiter, get Recruiter back in hand. Mm -hmm. Got about 12 minutes left on the clock. Okay, this this doesn't look like it's going to get time. No. Even though it's feeling very grindy currently. Yeah, Martin is slowly advancing his board shot, just trying to find something. Okay, we've definitely seen the uh, Lurin deck looking very fair here. Yeah. Well, it, it, that's part of what I think uh, is the appeal of the Lurin deck. It, it's, I mean, you've heard of combo control in, in Vintage. This is a combo mid-range deck. It can value out with Shardless into Dreamstalker, Bounce Shardless, it, it, and, well, and the Death Ray Shaman here has increased the clock significantly for being that fair deck. Death yes. Red Shaman is a powerhouse for damage. Any, deck that, any Delver deck
back. Hook's gonna play it. And there it comes. Just very powerful. Looks like he top ducked the land there. And then there's Recruiter. And we're grabbing the Baleful Strix just to hopefully draw into the combo here. Yeah, and that's some added protection against uh, the Dog Caps combo. Right. Gives him an extra turn here. And if you get life down low enough, he can't even attack with the uh, Merit Leash token. Yeah. Because you can just sit back and burn him out with Death Rites. Getting in there with the Death Rites. I think he drew a recruiter off the Belfast Strix, too. So. I think he's still, still going that value 1 1 1 2 1 beats. Okay. So. And what Sean really needs here is like a Toxic Deluge. Yeah. I don't think there is an uncounterable board white. Oh, yes, there is. The blue white one. Wrong colors. Yeah. That would be very good with Nether Void, though. That would be hilarious. <laughs> That's for Nether Void. We can start for it. There needs to be more Nether Voids out there. Why is that going to be on the restricted list? <laughs> This is just kind of the problem I've seen with, with this deck, because we had it on stream before, um, Sean's deck, is that sometimes it just sputters out and doesn't really have... Well, we haven't seen a life from the loom, so it, it doesn't look like it relies heavily on the card advantage engine that other land decks do. Yeah. It could be that he's just been unlucky and not drawn them. <laughs> Very well could be. But I could see him being light on that, given that if you if you have Living Wish, you have Nether Void, you have Rock Decays, those are things you want to draw, not things you want to dredge. Okay, so now we're going to see a little more of his Wish board here. He's got a Tabernacle in there. Um, There's a Depths. Oh, he has the Depths in there. Ah, okay. So, yeah. Unfortunately, oh, Depths doesn't save him here. Um, he's down to six life. Oh. And Tabernacle doesn't save him either. Because five mana is enough to pretty much pay for everything. Yeah, he's just going to get the ducks. Right, and Martin's pointing out that he can just drain it. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so he's just getting the, uh, the tabernacle instead. <laughs> Martin is also pointing out that he, he can pay the mana and just attack. So it's, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, very Martin, interesting matchup. Martin gets there in three. Yeah, that's a very... Uh, Unique. No, well, well played by Martin. Uh, it, well, well played on both sides. The uh, ability to play really a mid-range control game there uh, worked for him in two games. Yeah, he didn't need the combo at all. Right. We did not see a single alluring cast. Yeah. I really like the, the look of that Netherlands deck, but <laughs> it, just, it hasn't come through on camera so far. No, I, I, I like the idea of bring with sure. um, Nether Void. And Just rack. because it, it shuts down so many other decks. Mm -hmm. um, Storm would have a serious problem with it. Miracles would have a serious problem with it. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it's a little bit slow for your kind of Rug Delver or any other Delver deck. Um, you right. may just want to pull it out in favor of something like Lilies to keep yourself alive. Right. Um, but it does... Uh, I mean, if there's a deck that's going to play an expensive um, uh, enchantment like that, you do... You get your Mox Diamonds and Lands, you get your Exploration, so you, you do have ways to accelerate it out fairly quickly. And you're playing lots of lands, so, you know, you'll hit your land drops, you'll be able to play around days, perhaps. Uh, I've seen Nether Void um, as a singleton in kind of small pox decks um, with a Life in the Worm package. Um, it's just a way to shut your opponent entirely out. Yeah, plus, plus I think... Uh, as a lands player, you're not necessarily worried about the Delver matchups. <laughs> right. Anyway. Right. So. Ta Tabernacle and Maze of Ith help you significantly there. Waste, wasteland, being, being able to Wasteland out the deck with 18 lands. Yep. All of them non-basic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think we're going to cut away for a bit, maybe? Because we have a... Thank you for watching the match. It was definitely an interesting one. Uh, Lurin was able to take it in three without ever casting Lurin. Really shows you how much depth that deck has with the mid-range theme to it. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon, supporting the channel, making this type of stuff 
possible. If you want to check out the other streams, they're over at Twitch. Uh, I may cut up and add kind of the images and stuff that I did here to make them a little bit easier to follow if I've got time before the GP. There are some other good matches there uh, in that Monday Night Legacy that was put together. Thank you so much to Chris Cornejo for really organizing this and making it happen, and Card Kingdom for starting to stream their legacy events. This one was a almost 70-person event for a Monday night.